from the W. Page Pitt School of Journalism and Mass Communications, your home for the latest Marshall University news and sports. You're watching MU Report. Good afternoon, and thanks for joining us for the second fall edition of MU Report 2018. I'm Denai Pillai. And I'm Olivia Zarilla. We are a student-produced newscast of the W. Page Pitt School of Journalism and Mass Communications at Marshall University. We air this broadcast not only on West Virginia Public Broadcasting, but also Network West Virginia and YouTube. Now, on to our top story. Even though December graduation is a comfortable distance away, job seekers will tell you there's no time to waste in the search that follows the walk across the stage. In fact, delay can be costly. It's why Sean Lashley went to Marshall's Jabapalooza Career Expo recently to talk with those who are hiring. Keeping young people working inside the state has been a problem for West Virginia for some time. I think it's good for people to be aware of this and take advantage of it as they can. Approximately 30 businesses from the tri-state area attended the Jabapalooza an annual job fair for businesses looking for soon-to-be graduates. Uh, well, I think there's a lot of uh, varieties of different jobs that people are uh, There's a lot of volunteer work, too. I think it's good. Employers such as Amazon and U.S. Foods gathered in the Memorial Student Center to entice eager job seekers. With the coal industry on the decline and unemployment in West Virginia sitting at 5.4 percent, graduating students are faced with a difficult job market. Well, volunteering looks good on resumes. However, employers at the job fair had some encouraging words. The biggest piece of advice that I would have for a graduating senior, junior would have to be to explore all your options. You come to a job of blues at a job fair like this, there's so many different things. I know you've narrowed it down to something by the time you're a senior, a major that you have. But explore all your options. You may just find something different that you may actually like a little bit better. But that it takes you right through. It's a, it's a good shortcut to the top of where you want to be. And I think nowadays we're finding that a lot of people are afraid to stick with it and they want to move on quickly. Um, hanging with the program that you've chosen and the career path that you've chosen, you will make it as long as you stick with it all. Career expos can be a lot of fun, but for many students, the prospect of landing a career right after graduating can be daunting. Sean Lashley, in your report. With fall festivities approaching, many people are making plans to carve pumpkins or go to their next bonfire. But fall is also a time to bring awareness to something much more important. Recent deaths of celebrities such as Kate Spade and Anthony Bourdain from suicide came as a shock to many. But the reality is, the possibility a loved one needs help is higher than one might think. Celebrities um, commit suicide. There's actually an influx. Um, of suicides, and that's also partly because we're talking about suicide prevention more. However, and that, that kind of details of an obvious need to talk about suicide in the right way. I think they should have a month dedicated to, to bring special awareness to it. Like, yeah, it's something we should talk about all the time, but there's a time that we should maybe make it the most important thing. According to the National Alliance on Mental Illness, more than 41,000 people die by suicide each year. Despite that number, only 41% of adults in the U.S. with a mental health condition received mental health services in the past year, which is why September is National Suicide Prevention Awareness Month. The rest of your life um, is um, important enough um, that you, to spend any components of it um, experiencing suicidal thoughts or um, depressed or anxious thoughts is really just a shame uh, when we have resources to help you not feel that way. Just one of these resources is a counselor in residence, meant to speak to students who might be struggling in the evenings past regular office hours. And even if you've never seen a counselor or a therapist before, any student is encouraged to use one of the services available to them. Suicide is the second leading cause of death for people aged 15 to 24, with half of all chronic mental illness beginning by age 14. Fortunately, Marshall provides on-campus resources for students who might need help or just want someone to talk to. 
Um, and so talking about treatment and talking about uh, suicide in a more complex way, in a more nuanced way, is the only way, I think, in which we can really um, use suicide awareness um, to be beneficial to those people who are experiencing it. If a person thinks someone they know might need help, warning signs include excessive worrying, confused thinking or problems concentrating, extreme mood changes, prolonged irritability, or changes in sleeping or eating habits. But no matter how hopeless someone feels, help is always just a call away. As mentioned, Marshall University offers various services and programs to help students adjust to and navigate through their college experiences. Now, Ryan Murphy explains more about what the Counseling Center has to offer for Marshall students in need of guidance. It creates a safe space in the sense that you feel as though you have the access to something that you may not have had before, and you can better yourself in a way that almost felt impossible. For some college students, the key to navigating college while maintaining their mental health and well-being can come down to an open door and someone to talk to. The Marsh University Counseling Center offers support, help, advice, and problem-solving tips and skills to the university's students who may be struggling with anything from the everyday stresses of college to symptoms of mental illnesses. Students are moving away, students are coming with trauma and, and different things in their background that they need help with and if a student doesn't have their basic needs met, if a student does not feel okay mentally, they're not going to function well academically. College can be taxing on anyone's mental health, but especially students already battling with other stressors and mental illness symptoms. Students say the Counseling Center can provide a level of stability to those that struggle every day as well as students who have never had someone to open up to before. Um, college is sort of your first chance at being on your own and figuring things out and having access to something that you may not have had access to or were taught wasn't a thing, kind of like I was. Um, having that access really opens a door to, I mean, figuratively a new world. Like you get to figure out yourself and you get to heal, um, maybe not completely, but start on the road towards healing. Now, whether they need minor advice or someone to open up to about major life struggles, the Marsh University Counseling Center is open to everyone on campus. Ryan Murphy, ME Report. With football season comes family, friends, and fun for many Thundering Herd fans. And the Marshall fans in this next story have been spending game days the same for years. Football season is in full swing and Thundering Herd fans say they've been supporting the team the best way they know how since the 70s. Having a few drinks, a couple of beers with some friends, uh, just food and just doing everything possible to make it a good day. Game days at the Joan means two things, big crowds and tailgates. Tailgating on game days consists of many different traditions, but the most popular tradition seems to be enjoying all of the food. My favorite tailgate is some local Huntington places, whether it be the famous hot dog places or the famous pizza places that we're used to having. So we get to have all those in one meal. The food's here, the football's right there, so can't wait. Former Marshall football players say that making their way back to Huntington for game day is just like coming home. The tailgate experience, you get to see a lot of people that we were in school with when we were here. Uh, you see a lot of people we played with, and even gener different generations of players, we all reconnect. And several of the tailgates here are former players, but even if you're not a former player, we don't care. We invite everybody to come. It's exciting. I bleed green, and we will till the end. It's just Marshall all the way. Fans say supporting the Thundering Herd is what it's all about. You can stay up to date with the Thundering Herd and everything Marshall football at www.herdzone.com. This fall semester is finally taking on an actual fall feel. That after a long, hot summer. And as Larry Lonstein Jr. reports, most students welcome the change and the changing seasons. Marshall's colors are on display all summer long, but soon as the leaves already hint, the colors will change and campus will resemble more of the herd's rivals. Shorts and short sleeves for just a bit longer, but very soon, the walk on campus will require a sweater or a jacket. I feel like it's been a blessing because we've been dealing with a lot of uh, warmer temperatures and to have a bit of a cool down helps everyone out. Um, I feel really good. Summer's really hot and muggy and in the fall you just kind of have cool weather and it's super tolerable. I think when the weather's too hot it makes us more um, agitated and it just feels a lot better to be walking to and from classes. Another change is in the air around campus. 
The trees will be changing their wardrobe, as will students. But the grounds crew will be changing too. As millions of leaves fall almost through Christmas, groundskeepers will be busy cleaning them up. After all, it's important not to cover up the only green that remains, the well-manicured lawns for which campus is famous. I think fall colors just bring out a new side of the campus. Marshall University is beautiful and fall is beautiful, so it just adds an extra element. It basically shows how beautiful Marshall's campus is and how beautiful it is compared to every other campus around the nation. I think all the trees at campus make for it to be a beautiful fall experience. Even though there appears to be a consensus that fall is a better time at Marshall University than summer, summer still remains. Larry Lonstein Jr., Emmy Report. Normally, the weather is not a news story until it's extreme. Hurricane season, for example, or a heavy rain or cloudburst. But Marshall students remind us that subtle changes are newsworthy too. That's partly because the weather is a clear signal that midterms are fast approaching. And the next change in the weather? Well, that's a clear signal the end of the semester is on its way. And we want to end our show with a nod toward the coming spooky holiday. Even though it is a bit early, most who celebrate Halloween say they'd do it a year round if they could. Reporter Adam Stevens enjoys this time of year and has this story about a lake in Mercer County where many come to try and experience the supernatural. Every fall season, the owners of Lake Shawnee in Mercer County welcome people onto their land to tour what they say is a hot spot for the paranormal. We had purchased the same swing that the little girl got killed on. And that's when we started seeing the, the spirits and stuff coming out from that. The land used to be home to a fun-filled carnival until the accidental deaths of two children in the 1960s. The landowners say they still see the spirits of the two children, a boy who accidentally drowned, and a young girl who was killed on the swing set after a delivery truck backed into its path. My husband seen the little girl all, when he was riding the tractor, and uh, she was riding on the back of his tractor with him. And he was up there mowing one day, and he said that the, the feelings that he'd been getting off and on, you knew it was, was stronger that day. So he looked over his shoulder and there she was on the back of the tractor with him. Years after the carnival had closed, it was then discovered that the land's tragic past went back centuries. Native American remains were found on the property in the 1980s, which prompted a visit from experts from Marshall University. Those experts say that over 3,000 Native American remains could still be buried on the property. There were so many children's death because they had the flu or the pneumonia or something like that. So that's where they come up with the deaths. Landowners say they started letting people onto the property after years of interest from not just the community, but from across the country. They also say they believe if you have something special, you should share it with those around you. I, I, I believe in sharing. If you've got something that's uh, really nice, you know, I, I think you should share it. There's, there's thousands of phone calls a year, you know, my, it's on my bucket list to come to Lake Shawnee. Uh, my son's dying from cancer, he's always wanted to come to Lake Shawnee. Just so many different stories and cases that they want to come, it's hard to tell everybody no. So it turned into, instead of keeping telling people no, why don't we let them come on, do their experience that they want. Life is short, so we need to do everything we can to make it as pleasant as we can. Adam Stevens, Emmy Report. Lake Shawnee is open every weekend up to Halloween, and it is one of many spooky places to go to get into the spirit of the season. That's all. That's all the time we have for this edition of MU Report. Our newscast is completely generated by students in the W. Page Pitt School of Journalism and Mass Communications. MU Report is a television lab, and we're glad you're watching. You can always catch this newscast on YouTube. And be sure to follow our reporters on Twitter and MU Report on Facebook. I'm Danai Balai. And I'm Olivia Zarell. Have a great day.